Hi, welcome to the Woody Museum. I'm Dinosaur George. All right, let's get started. Carlos from Brownsville, Texas writes and says, were there any giant bugs in the dinosaur times? Carlos, it's funny you mentioned giant bugs because right now at the Woody Museum, we have Backyard Monsters, which is the world of insects. It's giant robotic insects along with hundreds and hundreds of other specimens of insects. It's a pretty amazing exhibit. You've got to come in and see it. If you're in San Antonio between now and January 2nd, 2011, please stop by and check out that exhibit. Yes, there were giant insects. Now, by the time dinosaurs showed up, most of the insects had gotten much smaller. It was before the age of dinosaurs where we see the really big insects. There was giant tarantulas, there were huge dragonflies, big scorpions, enormous centipedes. Yeah, there were some really big insects uh, back then. But by the time the dinosaurs showed up, most of the insects were relatively smaller sized. All right, Amy from Portland, Oregon says, what sounds did dinosaurs make? Very good question, Amy. We don't really know for certain. We do not have the technology today that allows us to recreate the sounds dinosaur makes. Now, they, they certainly made noise. I have no doubt that they made sounds. What sounds those were, we don't know. They may have chirped like a bird. They may have screeched like an eagle. They may have mooed like a cow. They may have even sounded like elephants. We don't know for certain, but my best guess is that dinosaurs definitely made sound because it would have allowed them to communicate with other members of their family. All right, Brian from San Jose, California says, did Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus rex live at the same time? And how come Tyrannosaurus rex is the only dinosaur with two names? Well, Brian, that's a good question. Um, first of all, yes, Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops lived together at the same time in the same place. We know this because we find their bones in the same layers of dirt. So that tells us, first of all, that they live together. But there are other clues. We find Triceratops bones with bite marks that match the shape and design of a tooth of a Tyrannosaurus rex. And then we also find the bones from Tyrannosaurus rex with injuries that were caused by the horn of Triceratops. So yes, they live together. Now, as to your second question, why is T-Rex the only dinosaur with two names? Actually, all dinosaurs have a first and last name, but Tyrannosaurus rex is the only one that we seem to call by its first and last name. Uh, dinosaurs like Triceratops, its last name is Horridus. Stegosaurus's last name is Stenops. And then there's also other members of those family. Do you know Stegosaurus? There's a Stegosaurus named Stegosaurus stenops, Stegosaurus undulatus, and Stegosaurus armatus. All of those dinosaurs have a different last name, but they all belong to the Stegosaur family. So for some reason, we happen to like to add T-Rex's last name, Rex, so we call him by his first and last name. Uh, okay, Cash from New Braunfels, Texas. This is right down the road from San Antonio, where the Witty Museum is located. Cash says, did dinosaurs live in Texas? Oh, yes, my friend. We had a lot of dinosaurs living in Texas. We had dinosaurs like Acrocanthosaurus and Deinonychus, Tenontosaurus, Dromaeosaurus, Albertosaurus, Pawpawsaurus, Protohadro, uh, who else? Shuvasaurus, uh, Euoplocephalus, Stegosaurus. These are all dinosaurs that lived right here in Texas, ah, including Tyrannosaurus rex. We find them all over the state. Uh, Texas has a rich history in prehistoric life, and yes, we had dinosaurs. Finally, Stefan from Piedras Neg Negras, Mexico said, when my family was on vacation in San Antonio, we came into the Witty Museum. My father heard you talking to someone about a dinosaur named Herb. What is that dinosaur? Well, Stefan, that dinosaur happens to be the dinosaur I'm standing in front of right now. Herb is our Triceratops. He is an icon of this museum. When I was a little kid, I used to come in and look at Herb, and so it's so exciting that we uh, have the opportunity now to see him in a different pose. When Herb was first put into the museum, paleontologists, paleontologists used the best knowledge they had at that time to figure out how they thought he stood. But it wasn't until later on that they realized that they had made some mistakes. Well, when we realized that the mistakes were made, we removed Herb from his spot we took him in and we cut him up a little bit and put him back together correctly. So Herb is one of the icons of the Witty Museum. And if you ever come to San Antonio, please stop by, visit the museum. There's a lot more to see than just Herb, but I gotta tell you, in my opinion, Herb is one of the best pieces here. We'll see you soon, thanks.